Hubby slept with every woman except me. My soon-to-be ex-husband was a very attractive man, and I felt like the luckiest woman alive on our first date. When we married we agreed that I would be making most of the money and doing most of the housework while he cooked me dinner and completed his bachelor's degree. At least, that was the plan. He flunked class after class because he refused to do the work and skipped class in favor of playing video games and complaining about how depressed he was. Pre-marriage he was charming and attentive during our dates. Post-marriage he was off in his own world and getting him to agree to date night was like pulling teeth. The sex became infrequent after the honeymoon and stopped altogether after a year and a half, you see. He liked chubby girls, and at 120 pounds I literally wasn't enough for him. My weight or lack thereof hadn't been a problem for the sex we had before marriage, but after marriage suddenly the pressure was on for me to gain weight. For every woman entering a marriage hoping to change her man into something he's not there is a man doing the same to his new wife. I could not discuss this with my female friends. There are no words in our society to describe a woman trapped in a sexless marriage. I was probably the only late 20-something woman in my entire state who had to beg her husband for sex. So from the beginning my marriage was played by a problem that had no name. I had always thought, perhaps naively, that marriage was supposed to resolve sexual tension, not create it. I did not get married to never have sex again. The homemade dinners dropped from every day to once a week because he was depressed. He also stopped accompanying me to family and social events. Again, I did not get married to show up alone to events, but I was patient. I convinced myself that his mental illness was the problem, not our marriage. I hit any pills that might be dangerous when he talked about committing suicide. I came home from work each day praying I would not find my husband dead. When he said he was going to walk out our front door and not stop until he died, I blocked the door with my body and called 911. I ended up canceling the 911 call after I got him to promise me he would not hurt himself while I was at work. My handle on this form comes from the fact that our life together was like a soap opera, an endless emotional roller coaster. I never knew if he was going to ask me for cuddles or yell at me. I walked on eggshells. One time, I was washing dishes, minding my own business, and he burst into the kitchen yelling, I'm going to become an astronaut and if you don't support my dream I'm cutting you out of my life. He was 28 and still didn't have his bachelor's degree, so I was pretty sure being an astronaut was not in his future. But after that outburst I didn't say anything, I finally convinced him to seek professional help. The worst behaviors were no longer present, but we never did regain the connection we had before we were married. At that point I did not feel like a wife, but like a mother to a moody teenager. His mood swings went beyond just normal bipolar disorder. He didn't want a wife. He wanted a mother substitute without the parental authority. The fact that his own mother left him with relatives in a foreign country at the age of 14 might have had something to do with it. The end of my marriage did not come when I discovered this sexually explicit text to one of his community college students. He had by this point found work as a part-time tutor. It did not come when, a few months later, he announced his intention to leave me for yet another woman, who, ironically, turned him down once he was free. No, my marriage ended the moment when I heard him come in the front door and thought, OCRP oh, is home. That moment came long before I had any inkling of his affairs. In a way it was a relief to discover the text because it gave me an excuse for divorce. I had grown up in a traditional household where divorce was very much frowned upon, so much so that I forgave him and resolved to work on our marriage after I confronted him about the texts. Ultimately he left me for the other woman. So there it is. I supported this man financially and emotionally for years, only to have him turn on me when he thought the grass was greener on the other side. He even asked me to buy him a flat-screen TV as a parting gift before you could say gold digger. I told him my parting gift to him was not emulating Lorna Bobbitt after I found out about the cheating. He also asked me if I would mind vacating the condo whose bills I paid solely out of my own money whenever he wanted romantic evenings with his mistress. I told him to boil his head take a long walk off a short pier, and then go F himself. Some people's heads are so far up their own. Slowly my self-respect was returning. I never realized how much I gave into him and how much of myself I had lost in the process until I had nothing. More to lose. Owing to some unusual legal circumstances he got our home, but it was 100% worth it to be free again. My traditional upbringing failed me utterly. When this COVID-19 business is over I intend to stick to escorts. At least they will actually do the job they are being paid to do, 
not expect me to wait on them hand and foot after putting in a full day's work, and be honest about the fact that they are seeing other women. Best of all, they will have no power to strip me of my home and half on assets. Story 2. My partner M21. Thinks I'm F22. Trying to change him by asking him to be more considerate. We've been together for a little over two months, but how history, like three years of on and off last night me, F22, and my partner M21, started talking about life, or rather he was and I don't really know where he was going with it or what he was even trying to communicate to me, but the tone in which he was speaking to me and his body language felt like an attack on me and where I'm at in my life when it should have just been an open conversation. So here's how it went. He asked me if I know who I am and I said, I, I don't know I'm always growing and changing and having new experiences that help me learn more about myself. Then he said you don't even know who you are in a tone I didn't appreciate. Like a seriously you don't even know who you are type of way. I asked him do I need to have that figured out right now. He said that I should. Meanwhile, I don't think he has an answer for that question either. He started bringing up how I say I'm not happy. I have depression so I have a lot of down days. I asked him if he's happy and he said he's in the middle of happy and sad. I asked him what that feels like and he said he doesn't know and that he doesn't think about that. I know he has his down days too and his own demons he is fighting so why is he talking to me like he doesn't? Like yes I'm sad and what about it? I'm taking steps to be better for myself so what? Are you trying to communicate to me? Eventually I told him how his tone felt to me and how I was receiving the things he was saying. He said, that's just me. I'm just talking. I feel like he should be more considerate of how he speaks to me and makes me feel. After I told him it felt like he was annoyed that I felt how I felt. When he does that it makes me feel like I'm overreacting or being crazy. I want to be spoken to with respect and understanding. He said maybe the truth hurts. Sometimes it feels like he's projecting on me. I don't see it as changing him to ask him to consider my feelings a little better. Am I? I told him I'm not, but he wasn't understanding what I was trying to tell him. I don't know how else to tell him that people grow and change I want him to be more considerate of my feelings, not change who he is as a whole. Story 3 Falling a little too hard for my Tinder guy, but don't know if he wants or relationship help. I, 20F, met this guy, 22M, on Tinder literally a week ago, and we've hung out about four times already. I honestly did not even plan on falling this hard for someone, but here I am, and I feel dumb. He is honestly so sweet and funny, and I feel like we had a lot to talk about during our dates. He opens the car door for me, cooked dinner for me, kept insisting on giving me his hoodie, bought me this snack I like, most of the time replies fast. I think I'm just falling a little too hard for him, but I don't know if he wants a long-term relationship. When I said I was cold, at first he put his coat over me, but I said it was too hot, so he took his hoodie off and gave it to me. When he was driving me to work, he told me to put my hand out because he wanted to hold my hand. While he was holding my hand, he asked me if I've been in any relationships and when. I told him I've been in two, but I've talked to guys afterwards, but they didn't work out. He then asked me if I'm talking to any other guys I said no, and he said he isn't talking to any other girls, either besides his friends. We ended up holding hands until I got to work and he dropped me off. On our second date, he paid for me and when I asked for his Venmo, he did not give it to me and told me to not worry about it. After he walked me back to my apartment, he walked away and when I ran after him to ask for his Venmo, he leaned in and gave me a hug and then walked away. When I ran after him again, he literally picked me up and carried me back to my apartment and told me to go home and don't Venmo. We've also been to the gym together, like two times, and he said we should be gym buddies. I was supposed to go with him today, but slept until very late because I had work yesterday, and we haven't talked today as much. I know I may sound dumb right now, but I don't know if he just wants to or wants an actual relationship. I also need advice on how to stop falling so hard. I literally have like 60 other matches, but I don't care about any of them except for this one, dude for some reason OMG. I'm scared I'm going to get hurt again BC of how fast I'm falling. Also how often should you guys be texting each other?